think I think we can kind of just start to play. Does that sound okay? We're all good with that. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So the this the, the so the city is bulwark. We're in a we're in a um in the eastern United States, the the time is maybe the early nineteen nineties, but it's it's the early nineteen nineties through the prism of of the neo noir idiom and in, in, in the way I kind of think of that is that the 1950s and the 1970s exist in a sort of zombified revenant form, even though technically it's like the 90s. Um, and so feel free to use any, so we can feel free to draw on any thing from, from, from a wide, kind of a wide historical era as, as, you know, as, as we're, you know, looking for color um, uh, for the scenes. Um, there's a couple of, I think the the big background thing that I want to kind of that both that, that all the characters would be aware of, um, is that, uh, and I think I mean I imagine if this was like a, a comic book we'd maybe find this information out sort of in the background of panels or or sort of from um, we'd get like some talking heads of some some news reports or some you know some like newspaper you know uh, like some some newspaper headlines we're getting glimpses of but the big news uh, there's two big stories right now going on one is that um uh there's a, a a new exciting uh, candidate for mayor, and um, you know the, the the current mayor, Mayor Waterston, is is considered fairly corrupt and ineffective. Um, the city is certainly overrun by all sorts of societal ills, and his opponent is um, very exciting. His name is Amos Zag. And though he's rumored to be a former cult leader, um, he says he's just been a motivational speaker. And he's now moving to, to use his, all the kind of great advice he gave to people to get their lives back on track to the city as a whole. Um, some people do, some, some people, including Sam character gratitude, know that he was actually, in fact, a cult leader. And it's 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 sort of uh, sort of more more to it than that, but but this is the the imp impression he's giving, and then the other um, story uh, line or the other kind of big thing in the in the in the city right now that that that's going on that people would be aware of is this that I mentioned in the in the prep document the serial killer who has has struck um, mostly uh, as, as struck uh, killing several single women over the course of the last couple weeks to month, you know, month or so. And that's causing all sorts of, of issues um, for the police who seem to be chasing their tails around it. And, uh, and the, even, even the, a lot of the normal business as usual with the organized crime and unorganized, disorganized crime is, is sort of, a little bit like at a at a standstill because of the high end kind of police activity about the about this killer. Okay. So and I I think what I'd like to do is um say that to I'd like to start with Willie, um uh, Ron's character. And Willie had, you know, witnessed this terrible secret. And I, I'm going to be a little bit on the nose here, but the, the terrible, you know, so, so we'll, we'll get this set up. But the, the terrible secret is that you, your, um, a, a neighbor who lived, or a, a woman who lived in an apartment next door to you was one of the, the victims of, of this killer. And you had the experience, or you, you actually saw him leave her apartment. If, like kind of before, like before you really realized what was going on or knew she was dead, you saw him leave the apartment and didn't really know what was going on until the police then investigated and they, they kind of questioned you a little bit. And then 
it was the next day that you put it together that the killer, the guy you saw, seems to be someone who has it has been on the news or in the in the media as being the, the right hand man to Amos Zags. So you kind of recognized this this is, you know the the candidate, the cult leader's candidate, his right hand man as, as being that. And I, I, I'm, I'm maybe, I'm maybe pushing a little bit into, you know, reading a little bit too much into, into the story I gave you, but, uh, or you gave me, but it, I think something then triggered, you know, that, that figuring that out, um, for whatever reason with Willie, you know, kind of triggered him to go on the run. Right, rather than maybe do something like talk to the police or something. On the other hand, in in Bulwark, you know, talking to the police isn't necessarily a great idea. Yes, go ahead. Um, I am thinking um, that, uh, and then this is sort of maybe a little situational framing that that I'm not going to say is the case. Let me know if this is yeah. is good. Um, Perhaps uh, he did, you know, tell the police about the guy that he saw. Um, but uh, has has been okay. the The point is, is that he's now learned that it was a really bad idea to have told the police that it hasn't. It, it definitely right. Yes. It, it hasn't entered the investigation. Number one. Yep. And number two, he's now, uh, right. So, so maybe he doesn't so, even have to, to be anything specific, but I'm thinking if he's triggered by it, I mean, he's like given like, like and, left his job and run off into the streets, then there must be something specific that lets him know. That, right. And that's good because there were, he, so he, he told the police, this is good. So, um, he told the police, he, it didn't make it into the investigation and, he saw he started to feel he was being followed by by two um very creepy looking uh, a pair of a uh, very attractive but creepy looking man and, and woman who almost looked like brother and sisters uh, brother and sister um kind of lurking around his place kind of following him and um uh, you know kind of keeping an eye on him Okay, good enough. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I hear you in all of this. What okay. I don't know is let me know where you think I am or I can say where I am. Yeah. So, well, I was going to I think you, I, I was going to say, and again, this is that you had, you, you were going to be staying, we'll start off, you know, you're staying with uh, a, a, quite a colleague from, from your work, Benny. Mm hmm you're in a kind of a Benny lives in a one of these like uh you know below street level apartments mm -hmm. in a in a city mm -hmm. um it's it's nicely he keeps it nicely clean he's not a slob he has a girlfriend Maud who is um you know is you know isn't coming around you know while while you're staying with him uh there is a you know p potentially meaningful or, or relevant there is a uh, beside the front entrance, which again goes up to the street, there's a back entrance, which opens up directly into a kind of a back, um, kind of supposedly a garden, really more like a courtyard that's right. filled with like appliances and junk mm -hmm. and everything, but then does have access to an alleyway um, kind of uh, out to the street. So, so you know, you've been staying with Benny and uh, Benny gets home from work. And he, um, uh, you know, you, you've been staying there for a day or two. We don't, we can sit, you know. Um, Benny gets home from work and, and he says, um, Willie, you've got to, uh, um, you, you got to find someplace else to stay. Uh, there was a, um, there was some big, I think he must have been a cop asking about about you at work if anyone had seen you 
like it's it's just a matter of time before they 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 find you here and i you know i i can't, you know i don't know what type of trouble you're in but i can't i can't get mixed up in this and and plus you know i mean, Maud doesn't even want to come over while you're here you you really tweak her out <laughs> yeah well um no surprises about Maud. okay so you want to do get on to get to sam now or um or how do you want? Let me know where we're at. Um, we can, we can. Do you want? We can play a little bit. Oh, uh, I get it. So I'm definitely uh, at the moment. I'm thinking this is just sort of temporary. I've, I've got you know uh, my little travel suitcase, um, and I've got my uh, you know, and I'm, I've been kind of I'm making myself at home. You know, it looks like I'm. Look, I mean, it, it's been, for some reason, I've kind of occupied, you know, part of this little apartment. Um, and so I'm I'm kind of comfortable in it. So I'm, 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 I'm doing something like guy oriented, hanging out. I don't, I'm, I don't look like I'm running along. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, so, uh, so here he is and he's, and, and I'm, and, I'm imagining. You look, mm -hmm. you look more comfortable there than he does right now. Yeah. And so um, I'm, I'm imagining, you know, that he's kind of standing there. You know, this is kind of my place, but not very convincingly, right? The way that he's standing there. And so, all right. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I'm like brushing my teeth and it's like in his sink, in the kitchen sink, you know, or something like that. Um, yeah. And um, he, uh, he, he he's telling me this. I'm like, all right, Benny. Mod's great. Mod's great. And all you have to do is just stay a little cool about me being here. And I'm sure that there's no big deal at work. I mean, the, the cops, they don't really have anything. You know, I'm just being a little cautious. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of a twitch, twitch. But I'm just being, being a little cautious and I'm being a little, uh, you know, it, everything's really fine. It's, it is really fine, Benny. Um, I mean, this is the best for everybody. Um, it's temporary. Totally temporary. Ooh, spits oh. in the sink, right? <laughs> and so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm living on favors. I mean, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm going to stay right here. I mean, I don't, I'm scared. I don't want to go out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I don't want to go out. I'm like, you know, this, what, leave? What? No. Staying right That's here. That's good. Um, so, uh, so, and, and my trade is living on favors if it, if, if, if I got it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll give, yeah, for sure. And I think, I think I'll give you, um, I'll give you three dice. I think Benny is, is not Benny's a pushover. Uh, Benny, well, Maud's not Benny here, is, right? It'd be Benny's different if Maud were here. <laughs> correct. We'll, we'll, we'll save. That's a one day. Right. No. Uh, so, but Benny's a bit of a pushover. Um, and he, he did like the temporary thing. He's going to hold, but we'll see, but we'll mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. Maybe he liked it. Mm -hmm. Um, um, so it's so, three right. and then uh, three and then I got one for the trait, I believe. And yes. uh, yeah. then I've got one gambled die. OK. I'm out on the streets. <laughs> so, so he's like, uh, lose a die really, the pool. you know, you know, I would, um, you know, if if yeah, if it weren't you're, you're narrating. Weren't, yeah i know if it weren't the police i just can't afford to get in trouble and you know i i, I just i just think it's i think it's for the best i think it's for the best and I, you know i've got and I, um but but if you ever need any other favor just let me know um so, uh, so yeah, I almost like imagine a smash cut. It's like you know, and so it's, it's fine, right? It's like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, all right. So then, I'm I'm out then, there. Yeah, well, no, I, I like that. The, yeah, mm -hmm. a so uh, like a smash cut to you on the street. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll we'll we can maybe we'll go to Sam now and then can pick up with you on this. Does that sound okay? Okay. So, well, a little um, so. I mean, gratitude, gratitude I, I think has been, I, I, I think it's fair to say her life has been a little bit chaotic recently. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
and uh, she's um, she's probably not in. Um, well, it's hard to say, but you. Um, I, and I, I guess I guess my my thinking was. Again, again, I think if you if you have some different kind of concept of how to, how to frame some of this stuff, just let me know. But you know, she's it's been chaotic. She's been doing these hustles; they have been paying off. Um, you know, she's in her her home, and I, I um, uh, so oh, I should have I should have mentioned um. Uh, Benny's apartment is in the what's called the South Wedge neighborhood, um, which is be- kind of between the river and the highway, the kind of ex- the elevated expressway. Um, so it creates this sort of like pizza pie shaped neighborhood that's sort of cut off from the the rest of the city in a in a, in a nice way. Um, but then I was imagining that at least uh, for now. Um, uh, you know, um, gratitude would still probably still be living in her her home in the High Falls neighborhood, which is a little it's it's in the city, but it has more of a little bit of a suburban feel um, in terms of like housing on on you know houses on lots, and probably um, like uh, some some type of like hedge or. You know, if not a if not a full yeah. security fence, I don't know. And I think to add to this, if she is still there, I think she's feeling extremely unsafe. Yeah, yeah. I think she's invited over a bunch of kind of criminal type people who oh, will, you know, who need homes. Um, oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Who have guns, right, to like protect her? Yeah. Basically. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. come live here with me. I'm terrified, but oh uh, yeah, she doesn't want to go live in some hotel or something. Yeah, I love it, and yeah, and I. Think and, so. and I and it, and it and it might be that like they are um she may have gotten to the point where she's maybe again not necessarily super dis- having great discretion about exactly who some of these people are oh, so, yeah, so judgment may be off so yeah. so um you know it's uh well it's 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 the middle of the day and um, there are people sort of in and out, most, you know, people she knows, people she trusts, um, you know, it may be, it was a late night. So she's sort of just getting up or kind of just kind of uh, arriving. And, um, one of the, the guys who's acting kind of as, you know, this, you know, like you say, kind of a bodyguard slash kind of, um, uh, Reload or guest or whatever we're calling says there's you know kind of says there's someone here to see you, um, and he says she, she you know she she's she's she seems okay but she doesn't want to tell me what she wants she wants to talk directly to you she says you're old friends. Okay, so um, first of all, gratitude. She you know it's it's the middle of the day and she's like just waking up but she fell asleep in this like jean jacket with all this fox fur trimming all over it. So it has, it's like ridiculous and it's kind of ratty now. Because and like, the place is like full of hell. what, bikers or something? I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, she's got the, you know, like when you can buy like minks, like just, you know, and they're kind of strung together. She's got those like around her neck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she's get, um, yeah, she says, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to her. And she like fumbles through her handbag and she has one of those. You know those like little pistols, like Derringers or something. Is that yeah. what it's called? She has one yeah. of those, and she kind of sticks it into instead of it being in her handbag. That's a little less accessible. She puts it into like one of her the pockets of this jean jacket, and she goes with her, you know, hands in her pockets to see this person. And she like is like, oh, you know, calls out to one of these dudes to come with her. Yeah, they're her, they're her bodyguards. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. 